So there's a lot we could keep talking about with light frame construction, but let's move on to timber. Uh, I'm not going to talk that much about timber because I think there's just a few terms you really need to know. Uh, and beyond that, it seems unlikely that you would spend a lot of time uh, looking at specific examples. But let's just mention a few different elements. One of the big issues with timber is going to be those connections. Remember I said earlier that light frame construction, the great part about it is I have a whole bunch of redundancy built into the system. With the timbers, I don't have that redundancy. I have very few of these uh, bigger and much more important pieces. And so the specific way that each one is actually connected becomes very important. If one of the nails isn't quite nailed in right in the light frame construction, it really doesn't matter. Uh, if one of the connections in a timber frame situation isn't done right, well, that means that corner of the building just fell down. So really thinking through how those things work becomes actually really quite important. So imagine you have, say, an 8x8 column, and you're going to have a beam coming into that column. You know, how would you make that connection? Well, typically the way you'd make that connection would be with a steel angle, maybe, and some uh, steel plates, and you would tie the whole thing together. You'd sort of put it near each other, and then you'd bolt it, the whole thing together. But uh, from a timber standpoint, it might be that you would actually create something like that, and then you'd create a hole in the column, and you would stick the beam into the column and have it be sort of solidly connected. Well, that would be a very good way to deal with the sort of straightforward gravity loads going up and down. But what if something was pulling it out of the hole? How would you deal with that? Well, I might have a hole that I would drill all the way through, including through there. And then when I stuck that thing in, I would then take a peg and hammer that peg right through. And that would go through both the column and this little tooth of the beam, and it would hold it all together. So I might actually have multiple pegs. It would depend on what the structural system uh, was needing to withstand. Uh, it could be a very beautiful and complicated thing. It could be hidden. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that this thing could go. But you're looking for these very carefully thought through uh, systems that allow for the movement of each of the individual pieces, uh, but also that it can't pull itself apart. It can't uh, expand a little bit every year and just sort of pull itself out of that slot. Uh, there's a lot of different ways this thing could be. It could be a half lap, it could be a, a single tooth in like the one I've shown here, um, but it could also be something that's more where I have that steel that I was talking about, lag bolting that in, placing the beam on top, taking some steel, bolting it into place on the side, maybe a steel plate. Uh, you know, so this can be done in a sort of dramatic way where we're adding all of these different things, but we have to find a way to make these big connections be solid connections, have uh, easy to, to assemble. So there's got to be a place where it can bear while we uh, are kind of getting everything sort of put together and believable in terms of how it's being put together, that it's actually something that could be done uh, up in the air, uh, as well as has some beauty and interest to it. You wouldn't do timber construction if there wasn't some desire for that uh, special quality that the timbers have. There's something about wood and especially big pieces of wood that uh, very desirable, people enjoy quite a bit. So once we start thinking about how this beam and this column start going together, well clearly this could become much more complicated if I have beams coming in the other direction, I have a much more complicated set of uh, interactions, but I think you sort of get the idea of how these things uh, need to be thought through in order to stop them from pulling away, but also provide a sort of logical way of connection that can actually be done out in the field. Uh, under the light frame construction, I then have uh, joists every 16 inches, and that's certainly possible. I could uh, 
have joists that sit up on top of something like this and then put a floor up on top of that. And that happens sometimes, but that would be a little unusual. And so I'm gonna try a different version. And that different version is I'm gonna take decking material, which is three inches thick. And it's tongue and groove. And it's often made out of three different pieces of wood. It's not always, sometimes it's actually sort of carved out of one solid piece. But often it's made out of three different pieces of wood and that makes it easier to make that tongue and groove. Uh, and then uh, that allows us to just have this wood decking. And that wood decking can span pretty far, especially because it's tongue and groove. So it's not acting alone. It's actually working with all of the other ones together to make this very, very solid floor. The reason the three inches thick is because that's giving us uh, fire protection that it's gonna take a long time to burn through three solid inches of wood. So uh, having that three inches of solid wood is going to make uh, very hard for fire to get up from the lower level up through that floor. It will eventually, but it'll delay that process. If we just had a regular wood floor, well, first of all, a regular wood floor would need joists at that regular interval because it, that you know, three quarters of an inch of wood needs to be able to span, uh, maybe it can span 24 inches, but it's certainly not gonna span anything longer than that. Uh, so I get these much chunkier three inches of wood that's gonna be able to span a much farther distance so I can have these beams maybe at every six feet, every 10 feet, something like that. But also I'm not gonna have a fire be able to get easily get through from one floor to the other. So the decking, when we, as soon as we start talking about uh, timber systems, we're also talking about decking systems. It could also go with a steel decking with a concrete topping, something like that, uh, that would have a similar effect. Uh, but then you're mixing and matching different systems and you'd have to decide from an aesthetic standpoint whether that was something you were really uh, wanting.